Shalom, I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and we are live here in Jerusalem. It's a thrill for us to be here at the FIRM Conference, Jerusalem Encounter, FIRM Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries. If you're on this website, you know who we are. But I have to tell you, this is an answer to prayer right. for generations of prayer and a dream come true to see the body around the world gathering in order to support the living ministries in Israel. Right, we're living in such an epic time where God himself is awakening the church around the world to see where we came from. You know, we have a beginning and it's not just at the cross. Mm. Miles, I love how you say that it's not just a 2,000 year old story, it's a 4,000 year old yes. story and beyond. Yeah, and so now we find that Jerusalem is calling around the world. We're seeing that churches around the world, believers around the world are recognizing that there's new good news coming from the Middle East. We're seeing a place where Jews and Arab believers together, Jewish believers, Messianics and Arab Christians yeah. together are worshiping the Lord. It's such a, a picture. This is what I call God's peace plan. Right. Right. The double portion blessing going back to Abraham. Right. Well, so we want to share a little bit of our journey. You know, we just didn't happen upon this. God in his sovereignty called us to embrace something that's very dear to his heart, his apple, the apple of his eye, Jerusalem. I was raised as a Catholic, and um, as a young girl, I came to a, a place in my life that I was really aware that I needed a power greater than myself. And there was this precious lady, mm -hmm. she was a Filipino lady, mm -hmm. and she said, you know, you, know, you, you, need, you need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just asked God to bring me closer to him. And she said, you know, you're here, and God's here, and Jesus is the bridge to have eternal life. Would you like that? And I said, absolutely. I was so hungry for something of, of reality in my life. And when I said that prayer, it was like the light went on mm -hmm. and God awakened my, my spirit man to that he was the living God. Not just a defeated Jesus, mm -hmm. but a living savior that was alive and wanted to be involved in my life. Yeah. And then... Well, and then <laughs> we saw each other. I fell in love immediately. Of course, it was God had to work that out. The idea was that at our first cup of coffee, she told me that Jesus was her Messiah, was her Savior. And I said, okay, because by then I was a Boo Jew. I took a hard left after. That's Buddhist Jew for those of us from the Woodstock generation. We were kind of like anything but Jesus. And so I was into every kind of search for peace, chemical peace, liquid peace, powdered peace, and then finally <laughs> the Eastern religion peace, because I was looking for something, but not knowing what. I was actually running from God, but didn't know it. So when Catherine told me at our first cup of coffee that she liked me, but she was in love with someone else, right. I was very confused. And when she told me that Jesus was the Messiah of the Jews, I thought it was the craziest thing I've heard. She said, I just gave my life to the Lord, and right. I want to tell you that I'll shout it from the housetops. Mm -hmm. well, we were in my favorite organic restaurant, and I said, don't shout it in the good earth. I'm a regular here. <laughs> and it was then that I said that the Holy Spirit reminded me, if you ask God, he will reveal himself to you. He wants you simply to ask. And so Miles went home. He said, he asked the ceiling, God, JC, because at that point in his life, as a Jewish person, right. he couldn't say, even say the name of Jesus. Right. So he said, JC, if you're real, send me guidance. Right. I was talking to my ceiling, thinking that there might be a power greater than myself, but not knowing his name. And of course, I thought my grandmother would roll over in her grave had she known that I was calling on the name of Jesus. So I basically called him by his initials for a while just to get kind of warmed up. The idea here is that uh, I was encountered the next day. A man came up to me in the parking lot. I was on my way into an anatomy class at college. And a man came up to me. I was sitting on my car, a brand new car. And he said, uh, small talk, he was a musician. He had played with Van Morrison. I was very interested in that. We talked. He was listening to what I was listening to on the on a tape deck, for you young people, there was a thing called a cassette <laughs> tape player, and it was a little plastic piece that goes into your car radio. And he said, he stopped in mid-sentence, and he said, you know, the real reason I came over here right. is the Lord told me, go talk to the guy with the red car. And then he quoted to me the prayer I had prayed to the ceiling. He mm. said, you've been mm. praying for guidance. And then he preached the gospel to me, and I was stunned and shocked. I felt like my life had come to this point. The right. wind started blowing in this parking lot, and we got into my car and started to, he said, here, I've, I've got a new band. It's a Christian music band. I want you to hear their mu our music. And we tried to put it in my car, and the cassette, 
that was in there would not come out. Right. And so I thought, well, this is weird. It's a brand new car, my only brand new car. And uh, he couldn't get the cassette out, and I couldn't get it out. So we're fiddling with, with paper clips and dimes and keys. Finally got it out, and it was bent. It was melted. It was like this. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, the adversary, Satan, the devil, is real. And he wants to keep you from hearing what I have to say mm -hmm. because Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, the Mashiach of the Jewish people. His wife was Jewish. And he was in Bible college. And now I just wanted to run away from him. I couldn't get away soon enough, but I went home and called you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because God opened Miles' eyes to see that the scriptures were not just for the Gentiles, but that as he went through the Bible and as he called on the name of the Lord and as he went ahead and followed after this thing that God was drawing him, he saw that the book was absolutely Jewish and that, it was, that Jesus was his Jewish Messiah. And I, after I had give, given Miles that challenge that God would reveal himself to you, I got down on my knees and I was like, well, can you save a Jewish person? You know, this is back in the day. This is 30 years ago. And Plus. now things are just accelerated where more Jews are coming to the Lord. But we wanted to lay the foundation of where we came. And it was that next day that somebody came to me as I was walking through my college campus and handed me a track saying, Jews for Jesus. And I knew that God was doing something epic. He was doing, uh, he was saving uh, he was saving Miles, but he was also bringing me to an awakening that he was not just the Gentile Catholic Jesus that I'd grown up with, but that he was a Jewish man with a Jewish story and a Jewish future. That's great. You know, so it goes on like that. We had so many supernatural interventions by God, and I think it's true for us as Jewish people. We need the Damascus Road of coming to a supernatural experience with the Lord and yeah. the Berean Road. We need to study the right. Word and find out that, in fact, this is about Yeshua. The Old Testament, the Older Testament, the Tanakh, Hebrew Scriptures point to right. Yeshua all around. So now we're in this day where a conference like Firm is taking place, mm -hmm. and the whole world is seeing the Jewishness of Jesus, finally, and we're seeing that the, the headlines are catching up to the Bible. The Bible says it. Then God does it, we need to believe it, but now the headlines are, we're seeing the aligning of nations, we're seeing things happen that we, we could only dream about. Last right. night in the session here at Firm, I just wept mm -hmm. with the, the, uh, the glory of what God is doing mm -hmm. and bringing the body together with a compass in their hearts towards Jerusalem, because mm -hmm. Jerusalem is calling. And this message, I'm praying that this yes. message goes especially to pastors and leaders, right. that you can hear that right. you cannot have a theology that does not include Israelology. Mm -hmm. There has to be Israel and the Jewish people at the center, because our Brit Hadashah, our New Testament, says this same Jesus who right. ascended in like manner will return in like manner. He's coming back to Jerusalem, not Brussels, not Washington, D.C., not New York City, or even San Francisco, where we live. So this particular season right. is a jubilee season. We're in the 50th year, right. the anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. We're in an epic time. Now, we're in the time where God has brought back the people, it's been a half a century hmm. that they are now in the land that God has ordained them to be. You know, Jubilee year is that God would restore back to the original owner. That's... And he has restored the land back to the Jewish people. It's no longer being trodden down by the Gentiles, but it's in the Jewish hands and they are stewarding it well. And it's a signpost for us that our Lord is coming back. Mm -hmm. We are in the overlapping of the church age yes. and and and. Yes. The Messiah yep. coming, yep. Yes. and we are in this wonderful time where God wants to set us at liberty. Mm. This this window that we have, this jubilee year, we're in the mm. jubilee of Jerusalem. It's called this, you know, the city of our great King, and it's the golden time mm -hmm. for us to lay hold of the liberties that God has for us, yes. and to lay hold of promises that God has for us, yes. and to lay hold of things that maybe have been taken from us that God wants to restore. So I just put that out there for you because there's something that we can align ourselves with and receive from the Lord in this time. Right, and you don't have to believe us. You can look at the words of Jesus, Yeshua. He said in Luke 21, 29, that there was coming a time when Jerusalem would no longer be trodden down by the Gentiles. Yeah. And that June of 1967 is when this fantastic change took place 
that leads us to the injunction, the mandate, the plea from God. In Psalm 122, verse 6, he's asking us, right. begging, commanding. He's just in, inviting us. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray yeah. for the peace of Jerusalem. And my friends here in Israel have told me that it, it means not only to pray for, but to inquire after, right. to look into the welfare of. And that's what we've been doing for a while now. And we are so grateful to see so many others raising up right. in order to... Uh, inquire into the condition of Israel, the, the secular people, the Orthodox people, the Arab people, the Jewish people, and of course, Galatians 6, 10, the body of Messiah. Yeah. You know, it said in Jesus' time that if you wouldn't praise me, the rocks would cry out. Mm. Well, now, mm. it's His return is coming and the walls are crying out. Mm. Literally, around mm. Jerusalem, they're projecting mm. the song of hallelujah mm. all throughout Jerusalem. You're mm. seeing the celebration of the Jewish people back in their land, yes. back by the Western Wall, and back by where as close as they can get to Hamakom, the place mm -hmm. where it all began, where mm -hmm. God created man, mm -hmm. where God called man, mm -hmm. where God brought Abraham, where where Abraham was willing to lay it all on the altar, mm -hmm. and he then Isaac, God provided himself a lamb, a yes. ram in the thicket. Yeah. And that's where the shofar comes from. And yeah. that's where we, what we blow at this jubilee time. Mm -hmm. We blow the shofar to mm -hmm. remind ourselves of the jubilee of God, the, the liberty of God, and that he himself has provided the lamb. Yes, yes, yes. So th there are really three big ideas we hope you take away from this segment that we have. First one, I'm going to read these to you. The Bible is a love story in which God chooses a family and through them brings blessing to all the families of the earth by the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMashiach. That's number one. It's a love story. Starts with a wedding, ends with a wedding. Yeah. Number two, the regathering of Israel is not primarily a political movement, right. but a scriptural signpost that the Bible is the only book of predictive prophecy on the planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And number three, the rebirth right. of the Messianic movement Jewish followers of Yeshua right. is a call to believers around the world to look up for your redemption is drawing near. And that it's also a sign that the church and Israel have a shared destiny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are the three things we want to talk to you about. So this first one that God chose a family, and Catherine just alluded to it, right. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Lord, Lord said to Abram, get out from your country, lech lecha, get up and go. Get out from your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of mm -hmm. the earth will be blessed. Mm -hmm. That in you, the Hebrew is through you. So that through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Why? Because it was through this one family that Yeshua, that Jesus, would right. come. Right. And so we have to see that we are cut from that rock of Abram, but it's, it's a family story. Mm -hmm. It's a family love story. And we, we know that that Mahamakom, the place, is the Temple Mount area mm -hmm. where Abram was called to come up, as Catherine mm -hmm. said, and bring the sacrifice of Isaac. God stopped him in what we read at Rosh Hashanah, the Akidah, the binding of Isaac. Mm -hmm. God stopped him and provided an alternative. Why? Because he himself would become that blessing, that yeah. sacrifice. Right. But Abram called that place Adonai Yireh. We say in cowboy on the West Coast of America, we say Jehovah Jireh. But I think it's Adonai Yireh, the Lord who sees. Right. The Lord who sees. He sees your need. He sees my need. He sees what we are about, and he provides for us mm -hmm. as a good father. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And if you fast forward to the time of Yeshua, that's what his cousin, Yochanan, John, the, the Hamid Bail, the immerser, John the baptizer apparently wasn't a Baptist. He was Jewish. And he said, he said, Hine seha Elohim hanose et chatata olam. Behold, the Lamb of God yeah. who takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here, is we're celebrating the goodness of God and providing salvation for the Jewish people and by his great mercy, right. grafting in whosoever from mm -hmm. around the world into the Commonwealth of Israel according to Ephesians 2. Right. You know, it's a great love story, and that's what this call of firm is about, that you would be a co-laborer with God yes. in loving what He loves, in seeing the restoration of His, the restoration of all things that are taking place today in our lifetime, 
You know, to be pro-Israel is not to be anti-Arab. Right. It was one of the core values of our life when we first started this journey. We started in the nations. We've been in Africa. We served in Africa. We've built orphanages and did counseling centers. We've been in India and seen hundreds have come to the Lord. And we've been in Russia. It was actually in Russia where we were doing marriage seminars because Miles is a marriage and family therapist. And we're coming Don't back, hold that against me. Coming back after uh, doing those seminars, the Lord convicted our heart and said, you've been neglecting your Jewish identity mm. for Miles for Miles had neglected it. Mm. He had been in, in somewhat of a replacement theology mm. because we were under a pastor and we were following the call that was on that house. And, mm -hmm. and God hadn't awakened us to that he had a shared destiny for us that was beyond our wildest dreams. Yes. And it was to participate in his restoration work today. Yes. And so we began to hold a, a celebration. We began to hold the feast in our home. People got saved, mm -hmm. Jewish people, Arab people. Mm -hmm. And that is the heart of God. You know, he is broken down that middle wall of partition, yes. it says in Ephesians 2. And he's brought the two made one, two brought near, yeah. Jew and Gentile, male and female, Arab and Jew, yes. and he wants us to walk together in unity, and he commands a blessing. He commands a blessing for us, and it, it is so funny to me, Miles, how that, you know, when I, when I first came to the Lord and he gave me an awake, a, awakening tongue, mm. that it was an Arab tongue, mm. <laughs> when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I don't ask me how I knew it was an Arab tongue, I just, I just knew it was an Arab tongue, that God would call us to Jewish ministry and give me an Arab tongue. So there you know that God is doing something just amazing in this earth. Well, that's the, the beauty <laughs> in this, is that, that when we began receiving that word, we were finishing those seminars, the marriage seminars, and actually remarrying these Russians, who, these precious Russians that had been married under communism, they had a stamped marriage and they wanted, mm -hmm. they were newly, new, mm -hmm. newly saved, new believers, and they wanted Yeshua at the center of their marriages. And we were able to conduct a ceremony at the end of that week for 500 people mm -hmm. that were getting recovenanted with each other, with God at the center. It was a highlight of our life, and it was right after that. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank my first pastor for his worldwide vision right. because he put nations in our hearts. He led us to, to Africa, to India, to Russia, as Catherine said, and we started to see that it was a setup for when we would be called full-time into Jewish ministry that it had to include our Arab cousins. Mm -hmm. Last night here at Firm, oh my gosh, to see the stage filled with Jewish and Arab musicians together. Right. Again, that's me. I was just weeping, thinking, God, you're smiling on this, mm -hmm. smiling on the Fellowship of Israel-related ministries. Mm -hmm. We want to invite you to please get in touch and get involved with this. Get your church aligned with what God's doing now. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is a new reformation. It's a restoration. It's right. a restoration of something that he started long ago. I want to read you something. I've heard apocryphally, I think it's true though, that some believers in Israel can get saved by reading the parts of the Bible, the Brit Chadashah, the New Testament, New Covenant, that we don't read typically. We re skip over the genealogies, but listen to this. The book of the genealogy, this is Matthew 1, the beginning of the book. The book of the genealogy of Yeshua HaMashiach, Ben David, Ben Avraham. Abraham fathered Isaac, Isaac fathered Jacob, Jacob fathered Judah and his brothers, Solomon fathered Boaz by Rahab, a Gentile. Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth, a Gentile. And Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David the king. And David the king was the prototype of Jesus, his greater son, the greater king to come. Yes. Because David was born in Bethlehem and ruled in, Jeth Je in, Beth ruled in all of Israel <laughs> and was a priest, a prophet, and a king. And that's the picture of who Yeshua is because Jesus is coming back. But he's of the lineage of this one new man. He's of right. the lineage of a Jewish father, forebear, and a, and a Gentile grandmother, Ruth. So Ruth is a picture of the Gentile who gathers with the Jews to Absolutely. go back into Bethlehem, into yeah. the house of bread to, on a legal level so that the lineage of Yeshua could come in the place that Micah said in chapter 4. 5 verse 1, that you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you be least among the tribes of Israel, out of you will come him who is called from everlasting to everlasting, yeah. the great one. That is Yeshua. He would be born in the city of David. So Ruth is really a picture well, it's a of what the church is today. It's a prophetic book. Mm -hmm. And for us to look into the book of Ruth, and I believe that God is actually calling the church 
as a Ruth church because Ruth herself was a Moabite. She was maybe out, she was outside the commonwealth mm -hmm. of Israel. She was a Moabite. She, the Moabites were cursed because mm -hmm. of how they treated the Jews, yes. how they didn't give them bread or water when they were sojourning out of mm -hmm. Egypt. And so that there was a curse on them. But God always goes beyond what even he says mm -hmm. because he's a redemptive God. He's a forgiving God. He's, a, he's an including God. And he was doing a mighty work. You know, so here we have Naomi picturing the Jewish people yes. in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. brought out of the place of Jerusalem. They went out. Mm -hmm. They were looking for bread. There was a famine. They, they heard there was bread in Moab, so they went out. Her and her husband, her two sons, they married wives there, and in that place, great tragedy hit their lives. Not only did Naomi lose her, her husband, but she lost her two sons. So here she is in this land, a foreign land, with two daughter-in-laws and not knowing how to care for them. And when a person in the Hebrew culture is a widow, it's, 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 it's someone who is without a voice. So she is, she is without a legacy, without a voice, yeah. and without a hope. And it's Ruth who, through the touch of Naomi's mm -hmm. heart and the testimony of how she's relating to mm -hmm. God, something in Ruth said, your, pe your God is my God and my God. I, I, I want this God. Yes. And I want to go with you. Yeah, let me read it. This is Ruth 1.16. It's a classic. It was actually spoken at our wedding, but here's what's sung at our wedding. But here's what it says in the book of Ruth. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Yeah. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. And mm -hmm. we believe that that's the call on the international church now, yeah. a prophetic fulfillment of the international Gentile church, largely Gentile church, to re-dig the wells right. of salvation that's spoken of in Ruth and together to go into the house of bread, go into mm -hmm. the land, Beit Lechem, together right. spiritually. Yeah, and, and Naomi was... was not going to have anything about that because she knew that in herself there was no hope. So she tried to push her daughters-in-law to stay. And Orpa, the other daughter-in-law, whose name means to turn the back of the neck. You mm. know, in Hebrew, main, names mean something. They have a prophetic fulfillment. They have a prophetic meaning. So Orpa means to turn the back of the neck. Mm. Ruth means to be a friend. Mm -hmm. And Naomi is pleasant. And we can go on and on. Yeah. Ple uh, Boaz, who we'll soon meet, is in his hymn is strength. Right. But Orpa turns back. Yes. And her life, we don't hear anything more about Orpa because she didn't cleave to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. That's really sobering. Well, again, speaking to the pastors and leaders, to be part of God, the story that God is writing right now, it includes mm -hmm. Jerusalem at its heart. It includes the Jewish people at its heart. And so to, I, I would appeal to leaders and believers around the world, yes. I would appeal to you, don't be Orpah, don't turn the back of your neck and mm -hmm. be, disappear into history, but be Ruth, be a friend and come towards what God right. is breathing on, what God is living, is, is he's living in this in a fresh and new way. The gospel is going around the world and the gospel is again going forth in Jerusalem. Yeah. So You know, it, it also talks about Orpah going halfway. So she might have like, mm -hmm. oh, I kind of like this God, the God of Abraham, you know, your God, Naomi, but she didn't cleave mm. to Naomi. Mm. She didn't like desire to be like glue, yes. it says in Hebrew, mm. where she said, I am going to be thick or thin, mm. hard or not, mm. I'm going with you. And that's the call for us today, because if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for his sake, you'll find it. And that's what happened to Ruth. She was in great loss, yeah. but she fell in love with the God of Abraham, and through that love was able to lay her life down for, for Ruth, for, for Naomi. And together they gave each other strength to go back to the house of bread. Yeah. And God himself gave her a legacy beyond her wildest dreams. Yeah. That she would be grafted into the lineage of Yeshua. Yeah. And that's also a very personal story for us as Gentile and Jew together. We get that. But there's this very special part of it that we haven't told you yet, which is my mom, my little Jewish mother, who was... <laughs> typically a long-term, a pretty bitter, angry, hard person. And when I brought this gorgeous Gentile home, they were not thrilled, the family was not thrilled because I was by then the last hope of the house. I was the only son and I wasn't doing that well, but I was now getting my life together with Yeshua. And so they said, well, what does this mean? And so at first it was difficult for you 
But then God spoke to Catherine yeah. and said what? Said that, that you would be a repairer. Oh, well, uh, he said that I will restore the past, the ancient past, to dwell in. It would mm. be a repairer of the breach. And he was giving me a prophetic call that what we would be doing in our life, right. that we would be building these bridges between Jews and Christians, Jews and Arabs. Yes. And it would take a repairing time. Mm. It's mm. not just like a road, you know, right, right. like you just easy going. Sometimes there's a lot of rubble in that road and you need to yeah. remove each rock or each each resistance mm. with a with an answer of love mm. and meekness mm. and an answer of by the Holy Spirit to, to answer the the heart cry of each heart you know and then God wants to lay a foundation so it, it takes time yes well we we brought my mom out to California for the towards the end of her life and she was with us and first time I went to Africa on a missions uh, trip she received the Lord. There was a Bible study where she was, and she raised her hand for salvation. And the little young preacher went to her and said, Hannah, do you know what you're doing? And she looked at him with that typical gaze and New York accent, and she said, just don't tell Miles. Because <laughs> she didn't want to admit that I was right about yeah. Yeshua. But the blessing is it. my mom is with the Lord, my sister's with the Lord. Right. They both came to faith. And at the end of my mom's life, after all that early resistance, the end of her life, the only face mm -hmm. that she truly recognized and would bring a, a light, just light up her face mm -hmm. was my gorgeous wife. Yeah. Because God had done something supernatural between a Ruth and a Naomi. Right, right. So let's get to the second big idea. The second big idea is this. The regathering of Israel is not primarily a political movement, but a scriptural signpost that the Bible is the only book of predictive prophecy on the planet. Wow. In all the earth, there is a country, Israel. In all of Israel, there is a city, Jerusalem. In all of Jerusalem, there is a mountain, Mount Moriah, and Moriah, and on Mount Moriah, there is a place, Hamakom, the place. This is God's gate into the earth. You know, when you come to Israel, or if you're in a Jewish community, you'll see a mezuzah on the doorpost. Inside of it is the Shema, the central prayer mm -hmm. of Hebrew life. And it starts with the letter Shin, which looks like this. Right. And that is what Jerusalem looks like. There is a Kidron Valley. There is a, a Valley of Hinnom and a Central Valley. And so it looks like the letter Shin. I believe that this is God's gate, His entrance, His doorway into planet Earth is here, because He calls this His place. Mm -hmm. This is where He dwells. Yeah. And so we're in this time between the first advent and the second coming of Yeshua. And we're seeing that, that, that this restoration, this physical restoration, had to come first. But I love what you said, mm -hmm. Catherine, that to be pro-Israel is not to be anti-Arab. Mm -hmm. Remember, Abram had two sons that he mm -hmm. loved very much. Ishmael, the son of Hagar, and Isaac, the son of Sarah. Ishmael was his natural son. Right. Isaac was his supernatural son. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says that his covenant is with Isaac. Mm -hmm. But here's what he said about Ishmael. Listen to this. Abram said to God, if only Ishmael would live before you. But God said, on the contrary, Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son. Mm -hmm. and you must name him Isaac, Yitzchak, laughter. So I will confirm my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. See, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful. I will multiply him very much, and I will make him a great nation. There mm -hmm. will be 12 princes that come from him. Think about the size of the Muslim world today, the size mm -hmm. of the descendants of Ishmael that are following mm -hmm. after another god, but, are, but the, just the incredible population that came from those 12 princes. Mm -hmm. Think about the land mass mm -hmm. that they have and the oil wealth that they have. God has blessed Ishmael. Yeah. But I have to bust a certain myth about Palestine. We love our Palestinian Arab friends, but the fact is right. that this land was never called Palestine until after 135 AD and the Bar Kokhba revolt. Right. When the Jewish people rose up against Rome, they changed the name from Judea, Judea Capta, which means Jerusalem is the captive of Rome. Mm -hmm. They changed the name. They even had coins stamped with that on it. Right. They changed that to Palestina in order to insult the Jews further. Mm -hmm. But it was never existing as Palestine during the time of the Romans until 135 AD. And parenthetically or pivotally, the Arabic people, the Philistines, were not Arabic people. They were seafaring people from the, from the north, from the, the mm -hmm. seas, the Aegean Sea, coming out of the Mediterranean above in Greece, etc. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a lot of misnomers going on. I want to read you something about the, the, the heartbeat of some of the Arab leaders back in the early part of the 20th century. This is the Emir Faisal, who was the founder of one of the great nations in the Arab world. We Arabs 
look with greatest sympathy on the Zionist movement. We will do our best to help them through. We will wish the Jews a most hearty welcome home. I look forward, and my people with me look forward to the future when we will help you and you will help us so that the countries in which we are mutually interested may once again take their places in the community of the civilized world. That was Emir Faisal, an Arab leader, mm. speaking about the return of the Jewish people. Mm. So the question comes, can a nation be born in a day? Isaiah asked it in 66 verse 8, and the answer is yes. yes. May 14, 1948, a nation was born in a mm -hmm. day. Is it a political thing? Somewhat. But the central thing is that it is a Biblical. picture of what God is doing in the earth and preparing us for the coming of the Lord. Yeah, it's amazing how God's restoring the words that he spoke over Jerusalem, and we are eyewitnesses. You know, Miles, when you talk about that and how God is reminding the Jewish people that they that it's not that they're not occupying anything mm. but that God has restored back to them which that which he gave them and that which it's his land it's his plan and they are simply obeying it yeah. and you know there's a real enemy mm -hmm. and there's a there is a real enemy who resists that plan and he uses he uses vessels right. in that you know it's so interesting to me in the scripture that God has a prayer request <laughs> have you ever thought about that that he himself has a prayer request it says in Psalms 122 pray for the peace of Jerusalem mm -hmm. that they may prosper and that you would prosper and that we would together see the heart of God, the love of God, the truth of God being restored in this hour, Miles. I think it's, I think it's a privilege that we can enter into a prayer request that God has. And I think he has a prayer request because he knows it will benefit us. Right. So here's the last third big idea. It is that the Messianic Jews and the rising of the Messianic movement, the living body in Israel, made up of Jews and Arabs together, the rising up of this mm -hmm. remnant of Jewish people following Yeshua, following our Messiah, mm -hmm. is a sign and a wonder in the earth today. And it's not a side stream, it is a mainstream of what God is doing in the earth. Who are we? We identify as Jewish people. We identify with the land of Israel. We trust in our Messiah, Yeshua. We walk with the Gentile believers in unity. And there were a few of us, a handful, then thousands, now hundreds of thousands around the world. And we are a statement that Yeshua is coming soon. We want to invite you into this relationship with him. We want to invite you into this understanding of what we're doing, what FIRM is doing. Uh, we are excited about the days to come. Yeah. God is doing this wonderful thing of creating one out of two, the one, right, new man the one new man of Ephesians 2. Yeah, he called us to, to be his house of peace. And, and we believe that God is calling you to be that house of peace too, to build up and to be that one on the wall and to pray for the peace.